evening. So good to see each one of you this evening. I pray that you've had a good afternoon. And uh, as you were coming to church tonight, it started it, it started snowing, didn't it? And uh, of course, we're all used to that, aren't we? All right, take your songbooks tonight. Turn to hymn number 656 in your songbook. 656, send the light, 656. Let's go ahead and stand and we'll sing together 656. There's a call come ringing o'er the restless way. Send the light, send the light. There were souls to rescue, there were souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light, and the golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound, send the light, send the light, and in Christ's light spirit everywhere be found, send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light, let us gather jewels for a crown. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Now, aren't you glad we have a true gospel, amen, that we can proclaim and, and let other people know about? All right, let's go ahead and open in prayer tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for uh, getting all of us safely here to church uh, tonight, even though it's snowing, and I pray that you'll get us all safely home as well. I do pray that you will uh, uh, just bless the singing, dear Lord, in our hearts. Just rejoice uh, in that we have the truth of God's Word, the Gospel, uh, Lord, in our hearts and lives, and that we, we have an opportunity to share it with others. And, I pray that you will just use thy word tonight to speak to hearts. If there are people that need to receive Christ as their Savior tonight, I pray tonight would be the day of salvation. Bless now this service, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, turn to hymn number 653. 653, go back one page. So send I you. 653. So send I you to labor unrewarded, to serve unpaid a love that sought unknown, to bear rebuke, to suffer scorn and scoffing. So send I you to toil for me alone. So send I you to bind the bruised and broken. For wandering souls to work, to weep, to wake, to bear the burdens of a world of weary. So send I you to suffer for my sake. So send I you to loneliness and longing, with heart a hungry for the loved and known. Forsaking home and kindred friend and dear one, so send I you to know my love alone. So send I you to lead your life's ambition, to die to dear desires of will. 
time to labor long and love our men we value. So send a youth to lose your love in mind. So send a youth to hearts made hard by hatred. To eyes made blind because they will not see. To spend a wind, be blood to spend and spare not. So send a youth to taste of Calvary. Amen. Thank you very much, and you may be seated. It is a beautiful song, and I just didn't want to uh, mess up on that last part there. <laughs> It, how many, how many of you have you've never sung that song before, huh? It's a beautiful song, amen? So sing that you. All right, uh, as far as announcements are concerned, concerned, striving together for the faith of the gospel, Exodus 36, verse 7, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. All right, uh, let me mention that next Sunday, after the morning service, uh, ladies, uh, there is a luncheon plan, and uh, so I know that you enjoy that very much, and the time of fellowship, and, and uh, also have a devotional, and that's next Sunday, right after the morning service, and then, of course, uh, we're starting to get those military baskets, uh, Easter baskets, all fixed up and, and ready to go uh, next for next month, and and so I appreciate all the, all the ladies, all the people that have uh, signed up and, and just starting to bring things as well. All right, let's go ahead and, and we'll take up the Sunday evening offering. All right, how about, how about we go ahead and stand and we'll pray for the offering tonight. All right, Brother Spike, would you go ahead and pray for tonight's offering, please, sir? Dear Heavenly Father, we come here this evening, dear Lord, thank you. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Let me go ahead and mention a couple things uh, before we get started tonight. That is uh, the finals. Uh, uh, the last Sunday of this month, we, uh, the morning service, we will be handing out our Faith Promise cards. And uh, I want to thank all those who give faithfully to missions. Amen. And uh, I, I praise the Lord that we're able to continue to support 14 missionaries. 14 missionaries. Amen. And uh, to give them monthly support and, and what a blessing it is that we have people that are out there in the world, amen, and uh, we have a part in their ministry. All right, I was going to mention something else and I forgot. So with that, go ahead and take your Bibles tonight and turn to Philippians, the book of Philippians, and I'm sure I'll, I'll remember it as we go on here. Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4. I will go ahead and read one verse and then we'll open in a word of prayer tonight. And even before I go in prayer, anyone have a blessing tonight? You just want to share a blessing? Anybody like that? You just you just bubbling over, you just excited. Remember what God has done this past week? This 
Debbie? I praise the Lord for his safety. Um, there's two deer that keep running back and forth across the road, just right up here at the corner. And had we been there a second sooner, we probably would have hit them. So just grateful that God saw fit to take care of us, both coming and going. And as I was going out last night, I could see him running across the road again. So just be careful while you're over here, because these deer like to run back and forth. I don't know. I must have almost hit one of those deer too because the other night I was, mm -hmm. I was going out for Chinese in the middle of a snowstorm and, <laughs> and uh, so amen that, that's, yeah, were that's you going to say Let's go ahead and read Philippians 4.4 4 together, all right? Then we'll, uh, we'll have a word of prayer and get right into our study for tonight. Everyone ready? Uh, go ahead and begin. Rejoice in the Lord always, and, and again I say rejoice. Let's pray. Dearly Father, I thank you once again for the honor and the privilege we have of coming to thy house. And thank you for the word of God. And, and uh, I, I do pray that uh, the Holy Spirit of God would just uh, help us, Lord, to understand truth. And that we might be able to apply it to our lives. And uh, I pray, God, that you might get all the glory and honor uh, for all that's said and done. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In our outline so far, in chapter 1, we, we've talked about, um, and that is not how I want to start out, but I'll go ahead and start out that way. We've <laughs> talked about the joy in the peace. All right? Joy in the peace. And then we've talked in chapter 2, the joy of the people. And, and again, Paul, Paul was a people person, by the way. And if we're going to have an impact on, on lives all around us, we're going, to, we're going to have to deal with, work with people. Amen? Yes. And Paul did. And, uh, of course, we looked at also uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself in that chapter. We, uh, we looked at uh, Epaphroditus. We looked at Timothy. Amen? And uh, these, these men, of course, uh, were, uh, I mean... Especially, well, the Lord Jesus Christ is the ultimate example, amen? That these men live, live godly lives. Uh, we talked about them in chapter 3. We talked about the joy in the person. And, of course, Paul's testimony, right? He said, I press for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, that I may know Him, right? The power of His resurrection. And... Uh, he had joy in that he had an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because before he was saved, I mean, it was, he was going, he was totally against Christ, right? But once he got saved, amen, it was, it was a 180 degree turn, right? It was done whole, amen? And so uh, uh, we are presently, of course, in chapter 4, and we are, uh, we've talked already, uh, about the source of peace, because this whole this whole chapter, right, in chapter four, uh, is joy in the peace, and you and I can have that joy because we have the peace with God in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Romans chapter five, verse one. Therefore, being justified uh, by faith, we have what peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've talked about the source of peace, uh, the secret of peace, and then tonight. Um, I must be mixed up tonight, alright? Bear with me. <laughs> We're looking at the source of peace right now. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. So, so in chapter 4, uh, under joy and the peace, the first thing we want to, we, we, we're looking at right now is the source of peace, which is joy. And uh, so here in chapter, or in verse 4, excuse me, that word rejoice, by the way, is found 192 times in our Bible, rejoice. And it's found 10 times in the book of Philippians, all right? That word rejoice, it's, it means to be cheerful, be glad, excited, thrilled, all right? When you have the Lord Jesus Christ, you can rejoice, amen? Rejoice. And then he goes on to say rejoice in the Lord. That phrase, in the Lord, is mentioned 10 times as well in the book of Philippians. When you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can rejoice. Why? Because you are in the Lord. Amen? Uh, you, are, uh, you have Him in your life. Amen? I mean, that, I mean that's, that's the ultimate relationship. Amen? 
is to have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. But then, uh, as we read on, uh, it says, Rejoice in the Lord. What? What's the next word? Always. In other words, at all times, right? We can rejoice in the Lord. And uh, that, that's, uh, it's only made possible because of relationship with Jesus Christ. Outside of Jesus Christ, a person cannot rejoice in the Lord always. In Psalm, go ahead and turn to Psalm 5 and verse 11. Let's look at that word rejoice for a moment here. Psalm 5 and verse 11. In Psalm 5 and verse 11 we read, But let all those that put their trust in thee, what? Rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. I mean, what a, what a wonderful relationship we have in Christ. And, and as a result, we can rejoice. And by the way, this, all the psalms that were sung by the children of Israel, were, uh, they were sung in praise and honor and glory, and, and they rejoiced, right, in God. The God of Israel, the God who had brought them out of Egypt, right? The God who had uh, taken care of them and, and the God who uh, was able to help them overcome all the enemies, right? That came up against them. And, and, uh, and so uh, you and I, whatever, uh, whatever the circumstances, we'll talk more about that. We can rejoice. Uh, Psalm 33 verse 1. Psalm 33, 1, we read, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Only, by the way, only the righteous, only those that are truly saved can rejoice. Alright? And then uh, Psalm, uh, well, look at verse 21. It's, verse 21 there. It says, For our hearts shall rejoice in Him, because we have trusted in His holy name. Again, the psalmist, we're going, to, we're going to rejoice in Him. Why? Because we've placed our faith and trust in Him. Aren't you glad for that tonight? If you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone, and He's, and he's saved you and forgave you, you can rejoice. Amen? Every day you ought to be waking up and saying, Thank you, Jesus, right, for saving my soul. I mean, I just, I'm just so excited <coughs> to know you uh, and to have a relationship with you. All right? And then in Psalm 68 and verse 3, Psalm 68, verse 3, Psalm 68, 3, we read, But let the righteous be glad, let them be rejoice before God, yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. All right? Exceedingly rejoice. I mean, it just, it, it, it's an abundant joy. Amen? It, it's it's a, uh, excitement. Oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't believe I had. I have a heart that's filled with excitement, amen, gladness, right? I mean, uh, I'm, a, I'm a basketball, uh, Debbie will tell you that, man, I just, I just like basketball, that's my favorite sport. I mean, and I, I, I look at the fans that are in the stands now, now that the, you know, the, the tournaments are starting to come around, you know, and stuff like that. Fans, you know, you see, I mean, they're wild, right? I mean, they're, they're jumping up and down, and they'll, they'll dress up, and they'll decorate themselves, I mean, they're... I mean, there's excitement, there's, uh, you know, rejoicing in the stands, so to speak, right? You know, and uh, unfortunately, that's temporary, especially if their team loses, right? I mean, blah, blah, you know, they'll tear up their tickets, you know, and burn their uni burn the uniform, whatever, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, when you have the Lord Jesus Christ, we can rejoice uh, exceedingly and always. I mean, it, does, it, it should never end, amen? Uh, and then in Psalm 89 and verse 16, just a couple more verses here in the Psalms. Psalm 89 and verse 16, it says, In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. And then finally, in Psalm 107, verse 22, Psalm 107 and verse 22, we read, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. And if there's an inner joy, an inner uh, gladness and excitement in your life, you're going to, when, when you communicate the truth of God's word or the gospel, I mean, there's going to be, like it says right there, there's, 
you're going to want to declare his words, right? Look what he's done to me, amen? And, and you're going to uh, uh, be excited about the message that, that, uh, uh, of the gospel and of the truth. And then 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. All right. So verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So there is joy in the peace. Uh, and we see that, uh, we see the source of peace in verses 1 through 4. In verses 5 through 7, there, let, let's talk about the secret of peace now. The secret of peace, by the way, is what? Prayer. Right? Prayer. Notice in verse, uh, starting in verse 5, it says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. That word moderation, by the way, it means being satisfied with less than one's due. It is a sweet reasonableness. It is a, it is a gentleness. All right? All right. With that in mind, for us, we are to let our conduct and we and we to have and and to have a Christ-like behavior, and it should be known or it should be manifested to all people. Let me say that again: our conduct and our Christ-like behavior should be shown and known to all people. That's that's what he's saying. Let your moderation be known unto all men. People are watching us, by the way. All right. <laughs> And, and uh, uh, as a Christian, your life is, be, is even more magnified, right, to others. And so let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Well, the Lord's return, by the way, that's what he's saying here, is soon. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. He's saying, uh, you Christians are at Philippi. Uh, don't be afraid to allow your... Uh, for your conduct and your Christ-like behavior to be shown to all people there in Philippi and, and throughout uh, the territory there. And uh, just as, as, a, as an encouragement to you, because the Lord's return is going to be soon. Alright? And, and uh, by the way, He's going to come sooner uh, than we think. Amen? And we're 2,000 years closer to His return. James chapter 4 I'm giving out the wrong reference here. James chapter 5 and verse 7. It says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband, husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Verse 8, Be, there, be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I mean, it's close. It's close. I mean, real close. And, uh, and well, what an exciting thought to know, guess what? I'm to continue to let my moderation be known unto all men, my conduct, my behavior, because guess what? Uh, I'm going to be rewarded accordingly because I'm, George, Jesus is coming back soon, right? And I'm going to have to stand before him one day and, and I'm going to have to give an account, right? As to my life and my works, right? As a, as a believer in Christ. Alright. Verse 6. We're talking, we're talking now about the secret of peace, which is prayer. And by the way, when you know you're pleasing God and doing what's right, it's, it's easier to come before Him in prayer. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. It really is. It says, it says here, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We are not to live in fear and worry. That's what he's saying here. We're not to. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen? Mm -hmm. As a believer in Christ, you don't have to allow all the, all the things that are going on in your life to overwhelm you and, and to live in fear. But then it goes on to say, but in prayer, but by uh, everything by prayer and supplication. What is supplication? So, supplication is our specific request. Amen? That, that we uh, that we uh, that we have that uh, that we are knowledgeable of, we are to make these supplications. But along with those supplications in our prayers, we are to do it with thanksgiving in our heart. Amen. <laughs> and Lord, I thank you that I had this opportunity to come to you and pray and and, and uh, uh, to make petition on behalf of not only myself but also for others. And so we can make. 
bold our, uh, make, we can boldly make our heartfelt petitions to God, right? And, and not be afraid to, to come to Him about anything and everything. Let us therefore come what? Boldly, the Bible says, into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. How many, how many, how many of you are needy tonight, huh? Mm -hmm. we're, well, I think we all, we all could raise our hands, right? I mean, we're all needy people. And we need, we need the, the mercy, we need the grace of God upon our lives, don't we? And the more you and I spend that time in prayer, the more we'll see that we are needy. That we are dependent upon Him. Amen? Just like uh, uh, the three little ones in the house, our grandchildren. Man, they are needy. Mm -hmm. You know? And, I mean, uh, if if the three adults were to leave the house and say, Okay, Gage, you're on your own now. And okay. we leave them alone for, what, 12 hours? Five uh, minutes. What was that? Five minutes. If we leave them alone for, if we, if we left them alone for an hour in the house all by themselves, um, uh, well, I won't go any further with that thought. <laughs> but but the, point, the point is, as a believer in Christ, we are needy. Yeah. We, we need Him, amen? He doesn't need us. God, God doesn't need us. We need Him, amen? But my God shall supply all your deeds according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Verse 7. And the peace of God, I like that, which passes all understanding should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I like this definition of the peace of God. Let me go ahead and read it to you. The peace of God, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation. Through Christ. Mm -hmm. And so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort it is. A person who has the peace of God has to first of all know that Jesus is their Savior. Amen. And once and once that has been settled, then uh, they uh, they don't fear anything from God and whatever whatever comes their way, they're content with their earthly lot. Where, wherever they may be, and what's, uh, of whatsoever sort it is. I thought I'd go ahead and, and uh, uh, give you some statistics, I guess you want to call it. Uh, but this is titled, A World in Turmoil. Uh, it was put out by Bible.org. Uh, let me just go ahead and read it. The personal journal reported this incredible statistic since the beginning of recorded history. The entire world has been at peace less than 8% of the time. In its study, the periodical discovered that of 3,530 years of recorded history, only, 20, two, only 286 years saw peace. Moreover, in excess of 8,000 peace treaties were made and broken. Uh, all right. Here's another, uh, here's another note here. Since, three, since 3600 BC, the world has had 14,351 wars. That's a lot of wars, all right? Large and small in which 3.64 billion, 3 billion people have been killed. And, and so uh, we, never, we never like to hear of war, do we? Presently, there are 21 wars going on in the year 2022, right now, as I speak. 21 wars going on uh, throughout our world. Now, we all only hear the news of one war, right? And that's the war that's going on in Ukraine, sadly to say. The U.S. military reports uh, between two to 4,000 Ukraine soldiers have been killed. Between five to 6,000 Russian soldiers have been killed during this war. And uh, there are a number of civilian casualties as well. Yeah. Uh, I believe in the hundreds, all right? It might even already, it might even be in the thousands. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But, uh, but it's, a world, it's a world in turmoil. And of course, uh, there will be, uh, you and I know it, right? According to God's word, there will be no world peace until Jesus Christ comes back, amen? 
They're at the, you know, for the 1,000 year millennial reign of Christ. There will be no world peace until he comes back and sets up his kingdom. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 14 and also in Jeremiah 8 and verse 21, uh, we, we read the words, peace, peace, where there is no peace. Alright? Mm -hmm. We don't see, we don't see the outward peace, do we, in our world today? Even in our own country, right? Uh, we, we, can, we can see that. Uh, but of course, that's where when, uh, when Jesus Christ is in one's life, they can still have peace, amen? They can still have the peace of God. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15 and verse 13, Romans 15, 13, it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. When you and I are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, not only do we have His peace, but we also have His joy. And we also, it says there, it says that ye may abound in hope. Amen? I mean, think, think of all the benefits we have because, uh, because we can, as we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? And, and we can have that peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Verse 33 of Romans 15, it says, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. And, and I do pray tonight, you who are, are here in the auditorium or if you're watching online, I pray that the God of peace would, would be with you. Amen. But of course, you must first of all know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 11. We read, Finally, brethren, farewell. This is the Apostle Paul, of course, speaking to the church at Corinth. Farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Aren't you glad for that tonight? And the God of love and peace shall be with you. I mean, we could all just, I mean, we could just raise our hands and say, man, that's exactly what I, what I desire in my life. Amen? That, that God's love and God's peace would be reign with me and through me. Amen? All right. H.G. Wells. Have you heard that name before? Mm -hmm. H.G. Wells? All right. He wrote this. He said, The time has come for me to reorganize my life. My peace. Let me start again because I paused too long there. The, the time has come for me to reorganize my life, my peace. I cry out. I cannot adjust my life to secure any fruitful peace. Here I am at age 64, still seeking peace. Wow. It is a hopeless dream. That illustration caught my eye because guess what? I'm 64. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, But the difference is I have the peace with God in my life. You know that? And, and He has been with me for all of these years to which I give Him all the praise and all the glory. And so daily though, I desire to have the peace of God ruling in my heart and soul. Amen? And that means I'm going to have to make sure that the Holy Spirit fills my heart and soul, right? Every day. I mean, moment. it's a moment by moment walk with God, by the way. Alright? Because the... Uh, uh, the moment uh, you lose that peace, the peace of God, the moment you can also regain that peace of God, right? right? I've given this illustration before of a, of a speaker, and he's, he just he just came from a a lecture, I guess, a, uh, preaching a message on on uh, the Holy Spirit of God, and, and he's on the freeway now. And uh, he's, he's driving along, and all of a sudden, this car, and, and he's, he's rejoicing in the Lord. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. This car comes zooming past him, and there was, a, you know, one of those, those cutoffs there, you know, off the freeway. And this car just kind of zipped right in front of him. I mean, I mean, just, 
And, and he, so he had to kind of hold, you know, hold back whether he stepped on the brake or not. He had to slow down anyway. And this guy just zipped in front of him to get off the freeway. And so the moment that happened, he got, he got really upset. He got really angry. And, and you know, and, and he, had, he said he had quenched the Holy Spirit of God. He was angry at me. You know, that, you know right? And, and uh, he said, though, as he was driving along, before he lost sight of that, that car uh, there on the cutoff, he had he had asked God to forgive him for that for that wrong attitude for you know for grieving the Holy Spirit and he asked God to fill him with the Holy Spirit and and that 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 uh, relationship was restored the peace of God had come back into his heart and soul and so uh, uh, the Bible does say grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed into the day of redemption we don't have to grieve the Holy Spirit right. Right? We, we can experience, we can continue to have the peace of God. Uh, and then it goes on, right, in our text, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Even though we can't comprehend or fully explain God's peace in our lives, we can't, right? Can any of you explain fully the peace of God in, in your heart and in your soul? But you know it's you know it's there though, right? Mm -hmm. When when circumstances, when things just are while wow, overwhelming, right? Um, even even physically, I mean, there have been times in my own physical life when I was hurting, you know, the um, the knee replacement, uh, uh, the time I, my ankle, my, uh, my my foot was up in the air, you know, in the car. Debbie was driving home, and man, I I was in pain, you know. And, oh, man, it's, it was probably one of the worst pains I'd ever had up to then, you know. And, man, I'm just, oh, you know. And, and, uh, but even through those moments, we can, we can still experience the peace of God in our lives. Now, it goes on to say there, which passes all understanding should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this, this, this peace of God, which we can't explain, right, uh, in our lives, it, though, it, it does stand guard, though, to keep our hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. As you have the peace of God, your mind and thoughts can reflect, right? He gives you that on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, that, that's where that peace comes from, as our mind is stayed on Him, right? I like the song, stayed upon Jehovah, hearts are fully blessed, right? Finding, as He promised, perfect peace and rest, right? I mean, that, 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 that's, that's, by the way, that's exciting living. Amen? You know? All right. Verses 8 and 9. Verse, I think what we'll do is we'll cover, uh, cover uh, verse 8. Maybe we'll go to 9. We'll, we'll see here. But notice in verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, it means in addition to what he's already said. He's already said uh, uh, in chapter 3, verse 1, Finally, my brethren. So now he goes on, and he's going to add more uh, to uh, what he's already been, been telling them, encouraging them. Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So in this chapter 4 now, we have the source of peace. The secret of peace, okay, which is prayer. Then now we have the sanctuary of peace, which is, uh, which are, excuse me, the thoughts of Christ. Which are the thoughts of Christ. We've already looked at chapter 2 and verse 5 where we said, let this mind be in you, right? Mm -hmm. Which was also in Christ Jesus. And so here, here is going to, he's going to break it down even more. Well, what, what, are, what are the thoughts, uh, what are the thoughts that God, God would have us to have, Right? It says here, whatsoever things are true. That's the very first one. In other words, that which is truthful. Okay? I mean, thoughts that are truthful. Uh, and, and unfortunately, we have a, a media out there, you know, if you listen to the news or listen to the media, I mean, and stuff, I mean, I, I, it's, it's amazing the lies mm. that are per perpetuated. You know that? Mm -hmm. it, it, just, it, just, it, it just amazes me. Uh, by the way, that's why we, we need to know we need to know the book. By the way, yeah. okay? uh, and, and you and I need to be filled with the Spirit because that will give you discernment of what is true and what is not true. Amen. Because 
because God would have us to think on that which is true. But then also, notice, uh, uh, wants us to think on that which is honest. Or in other words, that which is honorable of deeds. I mean, my, uh, what I'm about to do, I mean, your, your thoughts, right? I, I want to make sure I do that which is, which is going to be, uh, uh, that will not be viewed as something wrong, right? But that which is, that which is honest. Uh, which would not be something that people might think you're being dishonest. And then also, that which is just, your thoughts just, in other words, right thoughts, that which is righteous. And then, uh, notice what sort of things are pure. In other words, uh, purity in all things, pure thoughts, clean thoughts. Um, and, the, and again, there are a lot of programs that are out there, right? Whether on the computer or whether on television and stuff, we have you. You have to make sure you don't watch, you don't listen to it, the, the words, the music, and stuff like that, because garbage in, garbage out, right? You know, and, and I'm uh, I'm finding out that I have to be careful what I say, because our, our grandkids they they parrot everything you say. You know that, yeah. <laughs> and, and so we we have. We have to be careful, you know, because they're 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 like sponges right now at their age. But guess what? You and I are also, right? And, and so, purity in all things. And then, what's other things are lovely. In other words, that which is pleasing, that which is sweet-tempered, kind, pleasant, friendly, lovely, lovely thoughts. Um, and then. Uh, that uh, what sort of things are a good report? That which is gracious, of good will to others. All right, thinking in your mind and thoughts. What, right. How can I, how can I be gracious and, and loving and kind uh, to others? And then notice it says uh, in verse eight, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think think on these things. So if there if there be any uh, if there be any virtue, what does that word virtue mean? It, it, it's it's uh, moral excellence, modesty, godliness. That's that's uh, that which is virtuous. And uh, again, uh, we're living in a society where virtue is looked down upon by <coughs> people. All right, and we're we're seeing we're seeing that they're going they're going the opposite. Uh, and as, as the world goes goes the wrong way, right, and, and as far as virtue is concerned, guess what? We ought not to be following with the world. I mean, we, we ought not to be following right behind. We ought to be stay, staying right where we are, amen? Virtuous. And, and think about all the things that, uh, uh, that way back about a number of years ago that was looked down upon, but now today it's accepted, right? Yeah. I mean... Uh, it's it, it, it's amazing the words that are being said, the, the behavior, and, and, and all that. And so, in our mind, we, we need to be thinking virtuous. And, 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 uh, aren't you glad you have the Holy Spirit that will that will reveal to you and show you what is virtuous and what is right and what is wrong? And then, if there be any praise, that which exalts and glorifies God, and. Uh, you and I, as Christians, there is a lot. There is a lot to praise the Lord about. Amen. And in our mind and in our thoughts, we can, we we ought to be praising Him all the time, yeah. right? We just talked about it, rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, right? Mm -hmm. Rejoice evermore. Whether therefore you eat or drink, or what sort we do, what do all, do all to the glory of God. That, that's what that word praise emphasizes. And so again. What sort of things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report? Ver, uh, uh, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, what does the Bible say? It says, "Think on these things." In other words, in other words, careful reflection, uh, consider meditation, with a view to obtaining, with a view to obtaining. I I see. I see that all of these things are going to be of great benefit to me. 
So I want to obtain that which is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of a good report, virtuous and worthy to be praised. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 and verse 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, right, by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I'll tell you right now, these, these eight uh, things that we just looked at or what to think about, guess what? Uh, it, is, it is good, it's acceptable, and it's the perfect will of God that you and I think on these things. Just, right? True, honest, just, and, list, and, and on and on. Notice in verse 3 of Romans 12. Verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Thinking soberly, having, having clear thinking. Uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. And guess what? There's going to be a big, a big flame there in Syracuse. Right? They're going to have a parade and everything like that. And, and as a result, though, uh, the city is going to have extra police on duty for that event. Why? Because uh, the suds are going to be flying, right? <laughs> the, uh, the alcohol and all that's going to be, I mean, they're, they're going to be drinking up a storm. Mm. And uh, they know that people are not going to be very sober, right? Yeah. So you better make sure that uh, you don't get in your vehicle, right, and, and get a DUI, whatever, because the ticket for a DUI nowadays is up there, the price. I mean, it's, for some, it could be in the thousands of dollars. Um, uh, and so uh, the, the idea here is that as a believer in Christ, we can have uh, clear thinking. We can be sober-minded. Amen? Yeah. We can take these, these, uh, uh, these virtues very seriously in our lives. All right. Let me go ahead and finish verse 9 tonight, all right? And then we'll finish, uh, we'll, we'll continue next, next Sunday night. Notice verse 9. These things, or those things, excuse me, which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So here the Apostle Paul places his reputation on the line, doesn't he? Yes. Right? And, and he says, he says to them, that which you have learned, right, received, you, you, church, you there at the church at Philippi, that which you have heard and seen in me, I want you, all right, you, you believers in Christ that are filled by, I want you to habitually practice. Mm -hmm. You need to do those things that you've seen me do, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the result will be, and, and the Apostle Paul is speaking from experience now, all right? He's already been a missionary for 20 years now, at least, right? And, and so the result is, the God of peace shall be with you. And I've already read 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Let me just read that to you again quickly. It says, Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. And so, under, under many difficulties, as we, uh, in even life-threatening circumstance, circumstances, the God of peace was with the Apostle Paul. And uh, we don't, I don't have to go into a description of what the Apostle Paul went through, but it was, I mean, there were times when his life, I mean, he was declared, I mean, they threw him out of the city as dead, right? They're the city of Lystra, you know, and, and, and uh, on and on what he went through. But uh, you've seen my life, you've seen uh, what I've done. I want you to go ahead and, and uh, do what I've done, amen? Follow me as I follow Christ. And the result is the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace shall be with you. That is the key, amen, to our lives, is to having the peace of God, even though it passes all understanding, we know, right, as the verse says, we know that our hearts and minds uh, are going uh, are, are to be in Christ Jesus because we have His peace, right? I will stop there tonight and uh
I pray that this week, everyone, everyone, if you were watching, uh, those of us in our in the auditorium tonight, that this week, that you'll continue to experience, amen, the God of peace in your life, and that the Holy Spirit might have control, and uh, when things go rough, we know who to turn to, amen, yeah. <laughs> we, we can go to Him in prayer, right, and, and, uh, and, and really, and really uh, draw closer to Him as a result. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Word of God tonight. I thank you for the Apostle Paul. And, and uh, uh, thank you for the instruction you, you've given us. Uh, and thank you through the Holy Spirit's power that we can have the peace of God ruling and reigning in our hearts. And so God, I pray that you'll be with us throughout this week. And for those who do not have the peace with God, I pray that uh, they might come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, to know that their sins are forgiven once and for all, and that uh, they would realize that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And so God, I pray you'll bless now in the remainder of this service tonight, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name, amen.